If we want to survive this, we do it as a team. Yesterday, I got my code for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order, and I've been putting hours into this game. I'm not quite ready to do the whole full review because I'm, I'm not as deep into the game as I want to be, but I wanted to give you guys some first thoughts. And my review so far, it's a team-based action role-playing experience with storytelling that has been overseen by Marvel, and there's some great talent involved, some great voice talent involved, portraying characters that we know and love from the movies and from the comic books and the animated series. So you get something that's immediately enjoyable if you are a comics nerd, if you're a superhero fan, it puts a smile on your face. And that's what the other Marvel Ultimate Alliance games did as well. Wouldn't be the first time, sweetheart. And it was interesting because this game collects pretty much every Marvel character that you would want out of the gate. But yesterday, as the game was released, or, you know, just starting to hit the eShop, there was a Comic-Con panel where the season pass plans were announced as well. And we're going to be getting other new characters as part of the season pass for Marvel Knights, as well as the Fantastic Four, yeah, and X-Men, which is really cool. And also, we're getting Cyclops and Colossus as free DLC, I think, in August. So there are extensive plans to keep adding to Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 over time. The chaos has just begun. I think that's wonderful. I mean, I, I, you guys know me. I'm a huge superhero fan, and I love the first two Marvel Ultimate Alliance games. I think I played one of them on the PSP from start to finish as well, and I freaking love that game. You have proven far more resourceful than I would have imagined. It's just a really inviting and accessible way to play with all of these superheroes as if they were action figures. It's like an action figure RPG. It's like you got your whole collection of figures and you can mix and match and throw make teams that you want to. At one point I had Spider-Man, which was uh, the Peter Parker Spider-Man, the Miles Morales Spider-Man, Gwen Stacy, Spider-Gwen, Spider-Woman, and Venom. Is that Venom on your team? He may seem lethal, but when the world really needs him, he always chooses to protect it. They were my team, my team of four. And I was running around doing all kinds of great combos and beating up bad guys in lots of vicious and super cool ways. You have some concessions that you have to kind of deal with when you're grappling with all of these different characters and trying to, you know, maintain some sort of sense of order. You can, of course, play this game with local co-op or online co-op. And so right away, you're contending with characters that may be extremely overpowered, like Captain Marvel or Iron Man, where you know they can just be flying and zipping around all over the place. But of course, there are constraints so that, they, you know, the characters kind of stay together. But the camera in the game is going to try to deal with that. And also, the other thing that I noticed, even in my short amount of playtime with it, so far. I put about five hours into this. When everything is firing on all cylinders, when you've got all the superpowers and everybody's smacking and hitting and there's a crowded field of bad guy, it gets a little nuts. It gets a little crazy. It gets a little bit difficult to kind of just, you know, decipher who you are, where you are, what character you're playing. Whatever's happening, we can beat it. Keep fighting. And of course, I was playing it just a little bit before it launched and I tried to find people to play with online and there was nobody to play with online. I did see one of my buddies in the game industry boop on with playing Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 and I thought oh, he's just gonna be getting into the game right now I'm not gonna bug him and say join my game but that's what I intend to do today on EP live is play some online and hopefully play with some people that watch the show which is gonna be fun is this some kind of joke I would say overall visually the environments that I've seen so far not that impressive but because the game isn't super focused on giving you like a photo real insomniac spider-man kind of single-player story thing it's really just like setting up a playground so you you're gonna see some, you know, not incredibly exciting world building in terms of environment art and stuff like that, but it kind of leaves it open for the developers to keep adding more and more sort of modules to the game. So, uh, I guess that means we're cool then, yeah? Presumably, with all of this DLC content coming, and with the idea that we can stretch further and further into the Marvel lore and the Marvel characters, it's gonna make it, you know, approachable and believable for these game makers at Team Ninja to keep delivering us some fun content. Eh, I'll take what I can get. You're going to be able to dole out all kinds of great punishment, and you're going to get into that groove of leveling up characters and finding your best teams and just taking the action figures off the shelf and continuing to play. That's really what this game is about. You're just going to have hordes of repeating kinds of bad guys, lots of different levels that kind of feel familiar and similar. And this was true of the first two Marvel Ultimate Alliance games as well. Well, it may not be fine art, but it's fine by me. 
I'm really digging this so far, as you could probably tell, and I will have some further thoughts on this game on Monday. Hold your fire. For now. Yeah, if you're a comics fan like me or a superhero fan like me, I think you're going to have a big smile on your face with Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. As much as I'd love to stay and play, there's still so much more that must be done. Fortunately, time is on my side. <laughs> I shall be waiting here for you.